Bob the molecule decides to visit his friends, his fellow molecules in the three states. The solid, liquid and gaseous state. Let's see what he observes. He first goes to his friends in the solid state. He sees that the molecules are packed together very tightly and they vibrate about the mean positions. He is not happy. He sees his friends in the liquid state. He sees that the molecules are able to move. They are not as close to each other as his friends in the solid state were. And in the gaseous state, he observes that the molecules are freely moving in the room. They are very far apart from each other and so he happily joins them. So this is what happens in the three states of matter. In solids, the particles are packed together very tightly. They are very close to each other. In liquids, the particles are not as tightly packed to each other as in the solid state. The spaces between them are a little more than the solid state. And in the gaseous state, the particles are quite far away from each other. The spaces between the particles is much more as compared to the liquid and the solid states. Let's recall the kinetic theory of matter, the postulates that we've studied. So we know the particles of matter are very small. They have spaces between them, which we call interparticle or intermolecular spaces. The particles always attract each other by a force known as intermolecular force. And the particles are constantly moving. These are the postulates of the kinetic theory of matter. And this theory holds true for the three states, that is the solid, liquid and gaseous state. Based on this theory, we get the kinetic model of the three states. So this is the kinetic model of the solid state, according to which the particles in the solid state are very close to each other and they vibrate about their mean positions. So let's see. Since the particles in a solid state, they are very close to each other, the intermolecular spaces between them are very small and that is why they attract each other. That is, the intermolecular forces between the particles is very strong. So in solids, the intermolecular spaces are small. That is why the intermolecular forces are very strong. Let's see the kinetic model of a liquid state. So this is the kinetic model of a liquid state in which the particles are not as close to each other as in the solid state. They are able to move a little more freely than in the solid state. So this is what we get for the liquid state. In liquids, the spaces between the particles are larger as compared to the solids. So the intermolecular spaces for liquids are larger as compared than solids. And that is why the intermolecular forces, that is the forces that attract the particles to each other are weaker as compared to solids. In solids, the particles are very close. Intermolecular forces are very strong. In liquids, the particles are not as close to each other as in solids. So the intermolecular forces are less than in case of solids. Since the particles of a liquid are away from each other, not as close to each other as in solids, that is why liquids do not have a definite shape and they flow. That is why liquids are known as fluids. Let's see the kinetic model of gaseous state. We know in the gaseous state, the particles are freely moving. The spaces between them are very large. So the spaces, the intermolecular spaces between the particles of the gaseous state are very large. That is why the intermolecular forces between the particles of matter of the gaseous state are very weak. The gases have a very weak intermolecular force of attraction. And that is why since they have a very large space between the particles, the intermolecular spaces are very large. Intermolecular forces of attraction are very weak. This is the reason why gases occupy the entire space that is available to them. So in a room, they occupy the entire space, the entire room, because the particles are very far apart from each other. So here, we'll perform an experiment. We'll try to check for the compressibility of the three states. In the first test tube, we have a solid, a solid piece of wood. In the second test tube, we have a liquid, in this case water. And in the third test tube, we have a gas, a gas which is enclosed in the third test tube. They are all cogged initially. Now we'll try to compress them. We'll bring a piston and we'll see how much 
are we able to compress these three states? So let's see. We first compress the gaseous state. You see that it is compressed to a great extent. Now the solid and the liquid state. So you see that for solids the compressibility is negligible. The piston does not move at all. In case of liquids the compressibility is a little more as compared to solids. The piston moves a little down and in the gaseous state you see the greatest compressibility. You can compress the gases to a very large extent. Why is this happening? This happens because right now we saw the kinetic model of the three states. In the gaseous state the particles are very far apart from each other. They have a lot of intermolecular space. So when we compress them these particles occupy the spaces, the intermolecular spaces and that is why we can compress them. But in case of solids we know that the particles are very tightly packed to each other. The intermolecular spaces are negligible. That is why when we try to compress them there is no space that these particles can occupy and that is why the solids have negligible or the minimum, uh, minimum compressibility. So the compressibility for solids is the least, the compressibility for gases is the highest. Sponge you must have observed it can be easily compressed. So does it mean that it's not a solid? Well no. If you will observe this sponge has pores, the small pores in it. These pores trap air. So when you compress it the air is expelled. It is because of the expulsion of air that we can compress a sponge and hence it is still a solid. 